Hi, I'm Sean. Welcome to another On The Road video, brought to you by Appliancevideo.com. Stop! Before beginning any repair, always be sure to disconnect the power to the appliance. It is also recommended to test the outlet for the proper voltage. Remember to also turn off the water. The tools you'll need to complete this repair are a quarter inch driver, diagonal cutters, silicone, wire strippers, a small crescent wrench, and a refrigerator coil brush. We're here on a Frigidaire refrigerator. Complaint was that there was no ice. We weren't getting any water into the ice maker. We found that the inlet valve was bad. So with that, as a preventative maintenance, we're also gonna replace the diode for the customer and get them up and running. To begin this repair, we'll have to pull the refrigerator out, shut off the water supply, and then access the bottom rear of the unit. Okay, so to access our components we need to replace, we're gonna remove the white cardboard back panel. It's held in place by four quarter inch screws. Get those screws out, we can lift up on the panel. And take holding that in place, and we can kind of scoot it back, and that gives us access to the components here. Next step I'll do, I'll go ahead and remove the water line since I have more access to it with the cardboard off. All right, so I have my uh, small crescent wrench. Just gonna put it onto the fitting for the valve and then just go ahead and remove that connection. We can go ahead and move the line and the cardboard completely out of the way. Okay, so in order to remove our inlet valve here, it's held in place by two quarter inch screws. Um, in previous, I've noticed that the white cabinet behind here, uh, when they pre-drilled, they left it very sharp, so be careful so you don't cut yourself. Go ahead and remove our two screws, and then we get our valve, lift up and pull it out, because inside there's a little hook piece here that connects. And like I said earlier about the sharp this piece right here, uh, you can't cut yourself, I've done it before. Okay, so we have our new valve here, obviously our old valve. Um, and to point out the only difference on it, the valve is the same, got the same color coils as on the old. Um, and the only difference is the connections, the water line connections, they thread on here. On the new valve, it's all John Guest fittings. So what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna cut the water line as close as we can to this piece here. Then we'll go ahead and insert one into each one. Now they're gonna go in the same location, so we'll do one at a time so we don't mix it up. And then you wanna push it in, make sure it seats, give it a gentle pull to make sure it doesn't pull back out. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and start cutting our lines. I'll do one at a time, uh, just like I, I suggest you do, so that way you don't mix any of them up. Um, and when you do it, sometimes water will leak out on you. Another thing what we're gonna do is when we cut it, sometimes it will turn it, the, the tube into more of an oval shape. I will then just go the opposite way once I cut it and make it back into a circle so it fits in easier. So I'm gonna start with this, we'll call it this kind of uh, tan colored, which corresponds with the tan or brown colored coil. So we're just gonna go ahead and cut it. Like I said, we may get some water, but that's okay. Okay, so I got it cut off. To me, it looks like it's kind of at an angle I'm a bit of a perfectionist. We're gonna try to get it as flat across as possible with our dikes. Uh, like I said, we're gonna reshape it back into a circle from cutting it. Like we have here. And then we can take this and we can go ahead and take our new valve into the brown coil, since it's the brown water line, push it in. I can feel it grab. Just to double check, I give it a soft tug and it stays in. Now we're gonna proceed and do the exact same thing for the yellow, the green, and then for this piece here without a coil.
All right, so we're good to go there. Uh, the last step would be to do our electrical connections. Okay, so we've got, got the old valve here. We're just gonna disconnect our, our harnesses. And brown goes to the brown or tan on this. Yellow goes to yellow, and green goes to green. So there's no risk of mixing them up. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, replace our diode, uh, which is here, uh, this black piece here. We have our new one, like so, backwards, like so here. So all we're gonna do is uh, cut into some wires uh, and splice everything in. So we're gonna go ahead and this one, just cut the wires right back here to give us a little extra wire to, to work with. So I'm just gonna cut them. Uh, while we're here, we're gonna go ahead and strip this wire back. All right, and then we're gonna get our new, we're just gonna do wire for wire one at a time. And the reason we know to do this, uh, this wire here, it'll be a little bit harder to see. We cut the two wires from one end here, and we only have a single wire here. So that's how we know it goes in in this line. Because a diode only sends electricity in one direction, so we don't want to install it in the wrong way or else it won't work. So uh, they supply us with butt connectors. Uh, for this circumstance, I don't like them as much. So I'm gonna go ahead and use wire nuts. And because there's a water uh, possibility of leaking or something damaging. Uh, I'm going to use the regular wire nuts, but to seal it up because there's moisture in the area, I just take silicone and squirt it inside of there to now make it a waterproof connection. And we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the remaining two wires that we cut off of the diode. So these ones are a little bit shorter to work with. Separate them, strip one at a time. I got two more wire nuts. And strip these ones very far. So obviously we're gonna match up the colors, tan on tan and, and yellow with yellow. And then finally, gonna take some silicone it inside of here to help make that a little bit more waterproof. So now our next step, once we get the diode in place, we're gonna connect our, our harnesses, obviously green to green. Let's call it yellow to yellow, and then brown to brown. Uh, from this point here, uh, what I'll probably do is just clean up my wires, since I see how they're all gonna kinda go. Uh, either zip tie or use some electrical tape just to get them out of the way and make it a little bit neater, something like that, rather than have all this wiring hanging out. So that's what I'll do next. Grab a couple of zip ties. All right, so we got our, our wires cleaned up. Now we can go ahead and mount the valve uh, back in here. There's a little pin back here about four or five inches, like I pointed out before, that's gonna go with this little uh, cutout on the valve bracket. So we can go ahead and install that just by sliding it back into place. So that holds the front end, and then we have our two quarter inch screws, which we removed earlier, which we're gonna go ahead and reinstall.
Okay, obviously during the repair, we noticed the condenser's uh, dirty. So I went and got my condenser brush. I'm just gonna go ahead and clean this out. Uh, just as preventative maintenance. And uh, that way they don't have a problem maybe come summertime when it's high humidity and high heat. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and hook our, uh, our water line up to uh, the, the refrigerator. What I do, just to uh, make sure there's no buildup, just take a little piece of wire, stick it inside of the, the fitting here, uh, make sure that there's nothing build up blocking that water supply. All right, so now we can go ahead and connect our water line. Go ahead and tighten it down. So we got it nice and tight. What I'm gonna do now is go turn the water supply back on. We'll check here for leaks. Then we'll go ahead and plug the refrigerator back in. We'll run water through the dispenser, check for leaks, and then we'll harvest the ice maker and also check for leaks. Okay, we just checked for leaks. Everything checks out okay. So now we just reinstall our back cover. Go ahead and push it in place. And I gotta put in our screws to secure that back panel. Now our final screw is gonna be a little bit different. They didn't have a strain relief for the water line uh, to remove liability from us. We're gonna go ahead and install one on and then just secure that final screw in that normal place. So now when the refrigerator is pulled in and out, strain is here rather than down at the fitting. And that will complete the repair for the inlet valve and the diode. Thank you for watching another quality video brought to you by appliancevideo.com.